Hello, it's Scott Manley here for Asteroid Day Live, and I'm here with Lynn Jones, who is a research scientist at the LSST. Hi, Scott. Hi. Um, I think we were we decided we were going to talk about all the cool things that the public can do with LSST, right? Sure, you can. Yeah. Um, so LSST. The nice thing about the project is that all of our data, uh, all of the images, all of the alerts that we generate each night will be public. So that means that as soon as we know about a new asteroid, the public will know about a new asteroid and they can they can search our records and find out what else we might know about that asteroid um, from previous observations. So this, this gives us the chance to do all kinds of interesting um, citizen science projects like uh, take asteroids and search for light curves, um, look for ways we can detect activity with asteroids, and, and basically we'll have the public helping us f determine how we can find these, the, these uh, light curves or activity, and then we can use that information to help train our uh, like automated ways to find the same things. Yeah, so, I mean, to be clear, LSST is going to be producing more data about the entire sky than practically any other telescope, right? Yes. Every day, every, day, every three days, right? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be generating new observations every night, every night that the weather's good. Okay. So, well, thanks for telling us about LSST and public access. Now it's over to Sabinia. Thank you very much, Scott. And um, I think we mentioned it at the beginning, but it's worth mentioning today that this year, 2019, is the fifth anniversary of Astro Day. And it's personally, and for all of us, been amazing to see the growth and the impact of this event. And it's a worldwide event, it's a global event. It's here, but it's also in 192 countries around the world. And so many individuals, leaders, experts, astronauts, um, government um, officials and so forth are all contributing to making this day not only impactful, joyful, impactful is an interesting way of putting it though because impact an asteroid, but in a good sense um, impactful and educational and also bringing awareness to the topic of asteroids. And this could not have been done without the real rock stars of Asteroid Day, the founding members who I all have here in a panel, a pure delight to have all of you here um, collectively together and hopefully you can share some personal anecdotes of how you came together because there is a red thread here how each and every individual um, came to to come to Astro Day. So I'll start off with a short presentation even though you're familiar faces. Dr. Durin Pronario, who is a cosmonaut and also president of Rome Space, and of course the godfather of Asteroid Day, Rusty, and of course also a legendary Apollo 9 astronaut, co-founder of Astro Day, and also a co-founder of B612. And then the lovely, the one and only, Danica Remy, who is president of B612 together with Rusty, and also board director and the co-founder and initiator of Asteroid Day. And next to you, uh, we have Professor Christian Koberl, who is your University Professor and Chair of Impact Research and Planetary Geology at the University of Vienna. And then we have Ryan Watt, Senior Director, Morrison Planetarium and Science Visualization of California Academy of Sciences. And next to you, a veteran and legendary pers person within um, the space sector and the Luxembourg um, Parliament, George Schmidt who here is representing chair of uh, Asteroid Day. So I wanted to give you all a real presentation, even though you're familiar faces. So I wanted to start off with you, George, because you are part of the reason to also why Asteroid Day is held here in, in Luxembourg. Could you convey a bit of the story to how five years ago to today, how this all went along? Sure, let, let, me, let me be f frank. Ten years ago, I don't think I knew how to spell asteroid. <laughs> and then I, I moved to California for professional purposes and I met lots of interesting people, and, uh, including at NASA Ames and, uh, and, and other organizations such as uh, B612. And uh, five years ago, we were starting to design our Space Resources Initiative here in Luxembourg, to which I was, I was involved. And, I always thought that <clears throat> it's not enough to do research and uh, talk among scientists about 
space resources or asteroids on which there are lots of those resources. Not only talk about their, their threats that they may represent for, for Earth, uh, for our planet, but also about the opportunities. And I thought it's not enough to talk about specialists, about experts. We need to bring this to the general population. So we need to build awareness. We need to build understanding. We need to build education about asteroids and more broadly space. And so we put in our space resources policy design actually an action item which was about creating awareness and education among the general public. And so uh, I, I remember I was in, in uh, the Bay Area, in San Francisco Bay Area on December 6, uh, 2016, and it was just a few months after we had um, set up this uh, astro this uh, space resources initiative here in Luxembourg, the government, I mean. And so I said, well, uh, and I was, you know, listening to, to this event in New York uh, where I think, Doreen, you were very much involved in uh, designating uh, June 3rd, 30th uh, as uh, International Asteroid Day by the United Nations. And I said, well, that's, that's interesting. And, you know, and, and talking to Danica and, and, and many others, I said, well, why don't we do Asteroid Day from Luxembourg? Why don't we create an Asteroid Day in initiative in Luxembourg, bringing this to the rest of the world as, you know, a, a great thing to do? And uh, so, well, I, I decided to retire at the end of uh, 2016. And then some people said, well, you have nothing better to do than keep working. And, you know, so here I am as the chair of the Luxembourg Asteroid Foundation and uh, organizing these events, and I'm very happy to do that. Thank you for making that possible. And I'd like to hand over to you, Danica, because I think you would be better to convey sort of the red thread from when this started five years ago. You and Greg uh, Richards, who organized the first Astro Day, and it's grown to what it is today. And I know that each and every one sitting here has a personal connection to it, so I, I leave that word to you. Great, thank you. Yeah, um, when we started Asteroid Day, it was Rusty, myself, and Greg, and a set of conversations that had happened with the other co-founder, our other co-founder, Brian May, and, and we launched with something called the 100X Declaration, which is to encourage the world to accelerate the rate of discovery, um, and to encourage the public, to encourage governments and private in uh, industry to fund planetary science, but particularly planetary defense missions. And and so that was our call to action to the world. And we launched in 2015 with the 100X Declaration. And part of the 100X Declaration was to say that we should have an international day of education. And we picked the anniversary of the asteroid impact in Tunguska in 1908. And that's June 30th. And so that's how Asteroid Day on June 30th came to be. And we launched that uh, with a lot of wonderful participants um, at the California Academy of Science with Ryan over here um, that included um, the, really the very first webcasts. Um, Greg, uh, the, uh, our other co-founder who's in a truck right now making this production beautiful, um, did a webcast out of London and we did a webcast out of San Francisco and we had proclaimed June 30th to be Asteroid Day. And Doran and Russ Rusty had been doing a lot of very early work. Rusty really started an initiative with the Association of Space Explorers, which had been a true partner to Asteroid Day. Really, I would say that Asteroid Day is not possible, would not have been possible with the, with the leadership that the ASE had in the launching of Asteroid Day. But the work started very early with Rusty and the um, Near Earth Objects Committee work at the UN, and then finally um, Doran um, kind of taking it to the finish line, which is after we claimed June 30th to be Asteroid Day, he went back to the United Nations because the work had already been, the groundwork had already been laid and was able to get the UN General Assembly to also recognize June 30th as Asteroid Day. So it's been, you know, for me, a very, very personal journey and kind of getting to know all of these asteroid scientists and people who care about planetary defense and planetary scientists. And when we created Asteroid Day, one of the things that we thought was really important is to shine a spotlight on people like Christian, who you know has an amazing collection of meteorites in um, uh, Vienna, to the events that are happening all around the world at astronomy clubs, um, to say, everybody should love asteroids as much as I now love asteroids. 
<laughs> and so, you know, here five years later, we have this amazing collection of events that are happening on and around June 30th, and as you said, in countries all around the world, from Iran to Ghana to uh, the, the in Washington, D.C., to Brazil, to Chile, I mean, all over the world, and we just gave them the idea to put a spotlight on their scientists, their education programs. We gave them an anchor. And for me personally, five years later, I'm still overwhelmed at how big it's gotten. Mm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. No, it's, and, and the contribution is, of course, to all of you and then the, all the efforts and work of everyone who's come on board since. And, and, and Rusty, I, like Don, Donica mentioned, um, the ASC. I just wanted to, you know, how did that conversation start about asteroid? Because it's nearly like if I go 20 years back when the conversation started and then it came to the UN and now it's in the public awareness. But what sort of ignited that conversation? Well, about uh, 2001, uh, we really began the work on a, a number of astronauts and others, uh, scientists, uh, some managers, began working on asteroid issue, but more on, on the, the uh, technical issues. Uh, knowing where they are, being able to predict uh, impacts, uh, what you do about it when there is an impact, you need to think about how, how you can deflect an asteroid, prevent it from hitting. But as we got working on the technical issues, we realized that there was a really big, uh, un undealt with issue, unknown issue really at the time, and that is the geopolitical issue. Uh, because this has to be a planetary decision. Uh, the whole planet, when you're talking about deflecting an asteroid, uh, the danger zone doesn't stay where it was in the beginning. As you deflect, the danger zone moves across the Earth. And therefore, the whole Earth has to really make a decision to deflect an asteroid. And that's an interesting correlation because really anywhere on the planet you can, you are frankly threatened by an asteroid impact at some point in the future. And therefore we need to make planetary decisions in a timely way. That's never been done before. Nope. But that's what we're going to be faced with when we end up seeing a serious threat uh, of an asteroid impact in the future. And so we realized, as we, uh, as we came to realize that, we understood we had to bring this into the United Nations because it's the only body that really incorporates everybody's interest on the planet. And um, as we did that, uh, it became slowly obvious that the politicians of the world, when it comes time to make a decision, are going to need public support. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we started Asteroid Day in part in order to educate the public so that when a threat really does arise, there will be a planet-wide understanding of what this is all about. This is not like a hurricane or a tornado or a storm or a flood, which happens many times in each of our lifetimes. This usually doesn't happen in one person's lifetime. So people aren't familiar with it, and that's why we decided you know, to really meet this, address this threat, politically, we're going to have to have the public uh, have some understanding of it. And that's why we started Asteroid Day, and Danica and uh, the whole team have done a wonderful job in uh, bringing Asteroid Day into being now for five years. And we hope eventually, with all of the young people watching, you know, there will be a, a generalized mm -hmm. awareness that, yeah, this is an issue we have to address for long-term survival. It's interesting because now when you put it in that perspective and you think of planetary defense, it's just like planetary government. It's, it's nearly, you know, looking at the day and age that we live in now with... One has to be careful talking about planetary government, yeah, but I at know. least but, a but, cooperation but, but, but a plan between Planetary governments. unification of people. I mean, that's when we yeah. come together as people, right. um, when we have we a planetary... Planet, we're mm. one family and... In yeah. some sense, we're all existentially yeah. facing this challenge, so mm. we need to work together on it. Doreen, speaking of the UN that both Danica and Rusty have mentioned, can you give us just a brief, short update? What is the UN doing today when it comes to Asteroid Day? Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, we organize nice events. We want to be recognized uh, globally if it's possible, but you have to need to find the right path to do it, to find the right organization to promote it in. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we had a very good report in 2009, the asteroid threat uh, call for global response. And we didn't know exactly what to do, how to promote it at the level of the government government's leaders, we said at that time. And because I was connected with the UN for many years, even I was the chairman of the UN Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, I proposed to Rusty and to our committee to promote it through the United Nations, mm -hmm. through this committee. And uh, of course, it became a working document for the working group on near-Earth objects of the United Nations. And uh, we had very good results. Um, eventually, we organized, uh, with the help of the United Nations, two global organizations, uh, the International Asteroid uh, Warning Network, mm -hmm. uh, which detects the asteroids, uh, made all the cal calculations for the orbits and gives an awareness to the international institutions. And the second one, the space, uh, uh, space Mission Planning Advisory Group. Uh, in this group, uh, they are included most of the biggest space agencies in the world. They try to find a way to build the right technology to deflect mainly the orbit of the dangerous asteroids. And one thing was missing, mm -hmm. the information of the population. So we give the money from our money, we pay taxes and the UN is paid by our countries and so on. And uh, this awareness to the population came right in time through the Asteroid Day. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, I proposed to the Association of Space Explorers to promote this Asteroid Day at the level of the United Nations to be internationally recognized by a decision of the General Assembly. And you know, if the General Assembly issues a resolution or a decision, it is recognized by 193 member states of the United Nations. And we really needed this recognition. I did it, I promoted it. It was approved in the same year, in the fall, by the United Nations, and now we are agreed by all countries in the world. Yeah. So uh, the organization of the asteroid is it's successful first by the work of this team, mm -hmm. mainly the team led by uh, Danica, by uh, Betlou, by Rusty, me, uh, George Schmidt here. We organize in Luxembourg the Asteroid Foundation, mm -hmm. And we lead now this foundation, and in framework of this foundation, we promote a lot of initiatives connected with the asteroids and go forward with the United Nations on one side and with our organization and promoting the event on the other side. Beautiful work. Wow, and Thank that's you. really getting recognition. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, without Doran, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, well, without okay. all of you, and, and sort of going from the UN and the background, the technology, it's also beautiful that we have sort of the art and museum space involved in it as well. So, so I, I wanted to ask you, Christian, you're the Director General of the Natural Historic Museum in Vienna. Why has it been important to, to support or engage in Asteroid Day? Well, I have kind of two hats here. Uh, for about 35 years, I have studied meteorite craters and meteorite impacts and meteorites as a scientist at the University of Vienna and various other institutions. And so I was very familiar with the effects of meteorite impact. And when you look at large meteorite impact craters in the planetary history, uh, we have some impact craters on Earth that are hundreds of kilometers across, mm. and they have had a definite effect on the biosphere and on the geosphere and on the evolution of Earth. Mm. And one of the prime examples is, of course, the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous, where about 10 kilometer asteroids slammed into Earth uh, and created such an uh, ecological disaster and, and from tsunamis to acid rain and all kinds of other things um, <clears throat> that 70% of all living species became extinct at that time. So there was a definite effect of a large scale impact and we know by looking at the geological record on earth that there have been many such impact events and of course what happened in the past will happen in the future as well and so this is where my second hat comes in which is now the last almost 10 years as director general of the natural history museum uh, in vienna we have at our museum the world's largest display of meteorites and we have one of the absolutely largest meteorite collection, we have very active research in meteorites, and so we see kind of the, the, the small end of objects that fall from space. Mm. 
And uh, as an institution that is engaged in public outreach and in education, uh, we have always had the idea that it is important to promote current, active, important science to the public, not just look into the history of where things happened. I always like to say we're not a museum of the history of natural sciences, we're a museum of natural sciences. And so what we're doing is we're going to some really interesting topical things and that ranges, of course, not only from, from asteroid impacts, but also to the loss of biodiversity, genetic engineering, to light pollution, for example. We have a huge research project that we just started on that topic. So for us, it was kind of a natural thing to do that. And so we, when you know, emails started flying around in uh, early 2015 or, or so, uh, uh, I immediately said, of course, we have to be part of that because that is an important topic. And uh, as Rusty said, most people have not, fortunately, not seen an impact. But, you know, our geology view is a little bit longer and we go back a few thousands and millions of years in history and we see these things happen all the time. And then just before the asteroid day started in 2013, there was the explosion of the Chelyabin spolite uh, over Russia. And there was so much interest, not only from the public, but also from the media in Austria at that time. Uh, people came to interview me nonstop, basically. And so I thought, this is a topic where we can engage with the public and we can fulfill our educational purpose by reaching out to the public. Our museum is one of the largest of its kind, and we have almost a million visitors every year. That's about 10% of the population of Austria coming through our museum every year. Yeah. So there is a bully pulpit and I'm intending to use it. Mm. That's also a beautiful way of going about of educating, inspiring, and 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 it's sometimes when you when you talked about the consequences of an impact, it it's, it correlates a bit to what we're actually looking at today. You know, the weather is shifting, species are getting in, dis, in, extinct, and so forth. So, we need to take care of the planet. And anyways, before we end the the panel, of course, Ryan, I want to also get your perspective. Um, the California Academy of Science is also one of the founding partners of Asteroid Day. Tell us what your engagement has entailed and 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 what it means to to the the university. Absolutely. For, for me and for the institution, it's actually sort of a, Asteroid Day was part of a long story of, of engaging on this topic. Uh, we are a, a natural history museum. We have a very strong focus on life. Our mission is to explore, explain, sustain life. And yet we also teach astronomy. We don't do research in it, but we want to find stories that connect with that story of life on Earth. And there's a remarkable connection when you talk about asteroids and the origin of life, the extinction of life, as Christian mentioned, and the future of life on our planet. So when uh, it was actually a former colleague of mine uh, mentioned that he knew this, this guy, Ed Liu, who was working uh, formerly at Google and was interested in saving the planet, and he said, you two would probably get along. He introduced me to this guy who was interested the foundation of the B612 Foundation, and we held the press conference actually in the Morrison Planetarium uh, and incorporated visualizations uh, for, uh, for that program. Uh, that was just sort of the start of how we thought about telling the story. And Asteroid Day came along a few years later mm -hmm. with an opportunity to engage our public for a full day on the topic. Uh, and, and actually also coincided with the time when we were producing a planetarium show, which has now been distributed to dozens of theaters around the world uh, on the topic of asteroids. And uh, as we put it, the hard-hitting stories of our cosmic origins. So uh, we, uh, we've kind of latched onto this topic as a great way to incorporate space science and astronomy mm -hmm. into the larger themes of life, the history of life, the future of life mm -hmm. on the planet uh, that are central to the California Academy of Sciences mission. Wow, also beautiful work. Maybe it's from space that we can start to appreciate this planet, where we see sort of the correlation of where we come from and where we're heading. Uh, I know time is running out, but I would just, if you could just one or two words of where you hope Asteroid Day will be, let's just say five years, because time is exponential today, so five is like, you know, two years. We Stop continue to be a global event, and more and more people, young people mainly, uh, will be involved. We understand what means planetary science, what means mm. asteroids, what means the world we live in. Mm. Mm. Thank you. 
uh, so much of this I mean, is uh, visual, you know. It's, there's not much intuition, as we said, with asteroids and the potential for asteroid impacts. And uh, Ryan is a great example of, uh, he, he has a tool called a planetarium, uh, and with digital technology now, I mean, there's an amazing amount of visual visualization that can be done. So I look forward to every planetarium in the world, perhaps led by you, Ryan, um, nevertheless presenting a good visualization of what it is we're talking about here so that kids as they grow up understand this is an interesting challenge we're going to be facing. Yeah, sure there's a large potential for gamification. And my hope is that um, the people that are watching today and the people who watch this in the future will support missions like the double asteroid redirect um, test in the United States and the HERA mission um, so that we can get on with practicing what that demonstration deflection mission will look like so that we can actually show that together we can protect the planet. I have a hope and a fear, I would say. The, the fear is uh, coming on the tail ends of what Danica just said, that uh, you know, the, the space missions that are prepared there to defend the planet may not be ready in time. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time, you know, there's just uh, in December, there was a large explosion of a bolide over unpopulated area in the Arctic. Uh, but there could be another big one coming and it might be too late, you know. The hope is that maybe in five years we have a spacecraft out there, we do have spacecraft out there near asteroids, and maybe there can be a live broadcast on Asteroid Day mm -hmm. from an asteroid. Hey, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that one. I'm going for that one. <laughs> of course, I'll come up with a more modest proposal, but uh, uh, let me what Rusty said. I think that uh, planetariums offer a great gateway uh, for people to be exposed to this topic, but I think what's amazing is that, uh, as we talked about earlier today, the citizen science aspect of being able to be engaged in actually searching for, for these objects. And uh, in five years, with any luck, LSST will be creating more data than we'll know how to handle. And being able to engage the whole world with Asteroid Day as a catalyst for that in the search for these objects and the understanding of these objects, I think would be a great place to be. Thank you. Yeah, it would be nice uh, five years from now that really everybody on this planet knows about asteroids, what mm. asteroids are, what their threats are, uh, what their opportunities mm. are, and perhaps that we have you know, one of those spacecrafts on the way and you know, grab some of those resources that uh, we need for future space exploration, for future mm. exploration of our solar system. That'd mm. be great. And then, of course, perhaps we could, uh, in five years, double the number of young people that are doing STEM and that bring us forward mm. in uh, space exploration. Thank you. And yes. I hope that everyone has a happy Asteroid Day. Oh, yes, we all hope everyone has a happy Asteroid Day. Thank you so much for all the work that you do and for all the work that you've done. And I'll summarize and say it's time for us to raise our planetary consciousness so we can come together and save the planet when needed. And with that, over to Scott. Okay. Oh, thank you, Sabina. I'm Scott Manley. I'm here with Omar Kaisi from uh, OQ Technologies. What Hi. Do you guys do? Uh, well, OQ Technology is a new space startup in Luxembourg. Uh, our mission is really to build a global network of satellites to provide Internet of Things and machine to machine communication, especially in remote uh, and rural areas using very small satellites. And so, what particular uh, thing do you think that OQ Tech is going to excel at with this? Well, we have a focus, uh, especially on sectors like uh, energy sector, especially oil and gas. This is where most of our experience come from. Uh, and also we are looking into the logistics center, uh, the maritime applications, but also industry 4.0 applications like predictive maintenance and so on. And so in the next few years, you're planning to launch your first spacecraft. Can you tell us a little about it? Yes, so currently we are developing uh, a demonstration mission, a technology demonstration mission of a very small uh, satellite, a CubeSat, that is like 20 by 30 by 10 centimeter that we are aiming to launch and in order to prove the connectivity with our very innovative IoT waveform between uh, a user on the ground and the satellite in space. Okay, well, I think uh, thanks very much for that. And we're going over to uh, Lisa in the park. 
Thank you. We are still here at Matt Dawson's place together with Yanis, Noah and Christoph. And uh, they are doing a lot of experiments at the Lycée Almazinde in Mersch. And this box that you see here is an astroparticle detector. What can you do with this box? So at the moment we are looking at the interaction between atmosphere and cosmic rays. And we also look at the correlation between uh, climate and cosmic rays. In the future, we have many other projects like a strato flight balloon, which we will send in the stratosphere with such a detector. And we also will search a material which could potentially be used to protect us from the cosmic rays, uh, which is a big issue in space during longer travels. Mm -hmm. so. And Matt, cosmic rays is also some, something that you are interested in? Oh, yes. When I'm imaging the sky with my telescope, Sometimes there will be a white dot on the image, and I've been told these are cosmic ray hits. But what exactly is a cosmic ray? Christoph, you know that. Uh, cosmic rays, prim the primary ones, are actually particles, mainly protons, are coming from uh, different sources in space. And when they hit our atmosphere, they disintegrate into secondary particles. And on the surface, we mainly measure muons, those are essentially heavier electrons. And yeah, this box is able to uh, measure these muons. Now, how does it function? Well, inside the box we have two Gerger-Müller tubes, which are filled with noble gases. Uh, the gases are ionized whenever part uh, higher energy particles pass through them. And because cosmic radiation has such a high energy, it can pass through both tubes at the same time. So when both activated within a time period of two milliseconds, we know we've measured one cosmic ray. Mm -hmm. You are part of an uh, Italian network as well? Yes, it's called uh, Astroparticle Detectors Array and they have detectors all over Ita Italy and we are the only ones outside Italy but we try to uh, expand our network to have more data and so it's easier for us to really uh, explore the high energy phenomena. Phenomen and you have also a lot of other projects going on? Yeah, there is really much to look forward to. Um, John has also uh, already mentioned the stratofloid and there is also a possibility for us to go in Italy and make topography maps with a uh, detector of cosmic radiations uh, and yeah there's really a lot to look forward to. So good luck with your projects and thank you Matt Dawson for having us here today. My pleasure. And back to you at Cercle Cité. Dr. Doran Prenario is the one and only Romanian cosmonaut. He's a living legend in his country. Cosmonaut Prenario was instrumental in working with the United Nations to declare Asteroid Day as an official UN Day of Global Awareness and Education about Asteroids. Asteroid Day Live is the only programming dedicated to introducing you to many of the most prominent asteroid experts in the world. We learn by listening to them share their personal experiences and knowledge of how our solar system was formed, how it is evolving, and how we can protect our beautiful blue planet. But this programming wouldn't be possible without the generous support of major sponsors, including the government of Luxembourg and you. You play a critical role in our ability to shine a bright spotlight on the leading work of astronomers, engineers, scientists, space mission operators, and astronauts, our global rock stars, who bring the topic of asteroids closer to people of all ages and remind our government leaders of the importance of funding planetary science. Asteroids play an important role in our lives, from the formation of our solar system to their extraordinary value for future resource utilization to enabling ongoing exploration of our solar system, and finally, when they impact our home planet. Asteroid Day is more than just a broadcast program. It's thousands of independently organized events in 192 countries. These events are the heart and soul of Asteroid Day, as they connect and engage students on the subject of asteroids. For many students across the world, Asteroid Day is their only opportunity to listen to, learn from, and to meet astronomers, astrophysicists, 
and astronauts, heroes of the STEM generation. Your support enables the growth of our network of independent event organizers so more events can take place. It allows us to not only encourage the future generation of scientists, but to grow our online library of educational tools, enabling more people to dig deeper into asteroids and to connect to scientists, observers, and astronauts. Your support enables us to meet the goals of the United Nations Office for the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space Affairs by generating awareness of what we can do to protect our planet. Please consider becoming part of this movement by donating to Asteroid Day today.